Hey guys, welcome back. Today for Fantasy Friday, I'm going to show you how to do this creepy moth queen look. If you know anything about me, you'll know that I'm terrified of moths. So this is my part of a Phobias collaboration on Instagram with another artist and I'll link her makeup that she did below in the description box. Be sure to check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, everywhere I am Windsnap Arts now, so check me out there. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how I made my moth wings or these little moth guys that I've got chilling on me, be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. To begin this look, I'm applying a foundation that's about a shade too light for my skin. Next I'm taking a white face paint on an old beauty blender and applying this to all the high points of my face. This would be the center of my forehead, down my nose, the tops of my cheekbones, and on my chin. Next, brush a translucent powder over your skin to set your foundation. I'm going in with some illuminator along the tops of my cheekbones and the tip of my nose. Now I'm going to be contouring a little bit differently in this video than I usually do. I'm creating a square shape under my cheekbones. This will give me a more gaunt or hollow look in my face. To add to this effect, I'm applying two C shapes to the temples of my forehead. Because I want this to be a little bit more subtle, I'm taking a fluffy brush and blending that thoroughly into my skin. Contouring your nose is completely optional, but I really wanted my nose to look longer and more slender. Using a light taupe eyeshadow, I'm marking out where I want my face paint to go later. I'm also going to use a black shadow on my lid to mark out where I want the darker parts. I'm not really caring too much about getting this exact or precise because I'm just going to stipple face paint over it later. It's simply there for a guide. Now that I have the black and the taupe laid out where I want them, I'm blending them together with a dark chocolate brown shadow. With my outline all in place now, I'm using a rounded stipple sponge to stipple on a light grayish brown color. Whenever I think of moths, it always reminds me of old, dingy type stuff, so I wanted to really simulate a mold spore effect on my eyes. You don't have to be exact or precise with the way you're stippling. The only thing I would recommend is to use an up-down motion instead of a swiping motion. This will create fine dots instead of lines. Once I was satisfied with the way this color was looking, I moved on to a greenish brown and applied that just under my eyes. I also made sure to thoroughly blend this color down into the light brown that I already had. I decided that really wasn't as green as I wanted it to be, so I mixed a little bit more yellow into the face paint that I had mixed and applied that strictly under my eyes. Moving into a black face paint, stipple this just along the very top line that you drew. Be sure to blend this thoroughly down into the green and into the light brown. You don't want any harsh lines in this, it's meant to be a very nice gradient look. Everything up a bit and bring that mold color scheme back into things, I applied a white creamish face paint just onto the bottom. I really wanted thick, dark brows for this look, so I'm using a black eyeliner to fill them in. 
I later decided I didn't like this shape and went back and changed it. On the very fronts of my brow, I'm using a brown eyeliner pencil to fill them in and create a gradient between the fronts and the tails. I'm also being sure to blend this very thoroughly. If you have any messes, just go back in with the white that you used earlier and blend that up. For lips, I'm using my favorite black lipstick. I'm just applying this straight to my lips with the doe foot applicator. This lipstick is great because it dries matte and it'll stay on your lips literally all day long. Next, I'm applying a warm olivey brown shadow over the top of that. This shadow is shimmery, so it adds a really nice effect. Next, you'll want to line your eyes with a liquid liner. You can do a wing, but I avoided it since I'm going to be adding a wing, haha, <laughs> later. I also took a black eyeliner pencil and lined my waterline with this. If you plan on wearing falsies, be sure to curl your eyelashes to prep for them. I'm applying just a bit of mascara to give the falsies something to grip onto. While waiting for my mascara to dry, I decided to add a silver highlight under my brows. I also applied some of the same shadow I used on my lips to my cheekbones. Now that I've got my falsies on, time to apply some wings. I did this just with some regular eyelash glue, the same I used to apply the eyelashes to my eyes. Make sure they're dry before you pull your hands away. Using that eyelash glue again, I'm going to add some dots on my forehead to apply some little baby moths. I didn't like the placement of some of them, so I wiped the glue off with my finger and reapplied it to a different spot. Since I wanted to apply more baby moths to my chest neck area, I decided to contour out my collarbone area using the same colors that I stippled on earlier. Also, if you can do this gross thing and make your veins on your neck pop out, be sure to stipple around that area too. Use the white face paint from earlier to highlight your collarbones and neck veins, and to clean up any stippling that got out of place. Next, I'm using eyelash glue to apply a few more baby moths. You can apply these guys wherever you want, there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting them just where I think it looks cool. And that's it, you're all done. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check me out on other social media. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.